of the new vice chair of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to both of you for those explanations that we would like to have heard more about. I think this will really be at the very heart of the legal difficulties. And these are values that are not challengeable before the courts. And you, I think, both have come to the same conclusion that the THC level cannot be the only factor to bring before the court saying that this person has committed a crime. So in Bill C-46, we, the level has been established at 2 nanograms to 5 nanograms. So in your opinion, if the police use that data, do we not risk having a great many challenges before the court, scientific-based ones, saying that the person's not intoxicated because of what's been set out in C-46? Yes, you'd be, be facing a great number of challenges. I think that what we can say with uh, two or, or with five nanogram as a per se limit uh, would be that concentration. You could say that the person has consumed. You don't know uh, it, how impaired they are. We, we can definitely tell you we do not know how impaired they are because you have found that level. And I think that in the courts that would create quite a problem. I can tell you that if you get up into uh, seven to eight nanogram, then in fact you'd be at least be able to say that with respect to some aspects of driving, you're comparable to a BAC of, of 0.05 to 0.08, which we do know is uh, relevant for crashes, that we know the crash uh, in increase is there. But if you're down at 0 0.05, 0 0.02, I certainly couldn't tell you that when they are at that level that their driving would be impaired. Uh, so it's, it's and, and it varies so much across individuals, as you heard, related to issues of tolerance and such. So I think the legal challenges will become very considerable. We'll have to have certainly, as you heard yesterday, I believe, about the DRE experts. Uh, that would be such a critical part uh, of what you would need uh, to actually gain any kind of conviction, I would assume. What you are saying relies a great deal on studies that have been done over the medium term. Um, in what, within what time frame could we consider having sufficient scientific knowledge to be able to establish a TI THC level that cannot be challenged legally? So are we a year or two years away from that kind of a finding? Uh, I mean, the studies that we, we were proposing, I mean, we, we could have them completed uh, within, within 18 months. Um, however, I mean, back to just having a THC level by itself that can't be contested, we, we don't know if we're ever going to be there. And one, it may, we may have to start looking at other, the, like I said, the other components of cannabis, uh, cannabidiol, plus the other, the metabolites. Um, but even there, when, uh, like the tolerance issue, um, so at one THC level, we can, we can determine exactly for a given person what THC level will cause impairment for them. But because of tolerance, we, it's not going to be the same for every single person. So it's going to be v very hard to just to say this one level. Um, I mean, back to your first question, the two nanograms is definitely very low. Uh, when you look at chronic users, uh, there's been papers out there with chronic users two to three weeks after their last use will be above two nanograms. So it's very hard then to use that to say, that, okay, the person was impaired because they were above two. So the, the studies we're proposing are to, to get much better idea of w what the level should be. But in the meantime, if marijuana is legalized this fall to avoid those kinds of legal challenges, this won't be a winner for us. We, we, if we fill up the courts with legal challenges, we won't be any further ahead. So what approach should we take or what uh, direction should we give to police officers to manage impairment in, in, in the, such a way that you can bring this to court and it won't be challenged. Because if the two to five nanogram approach is, is going to result in challenges, what, what should we do? To answering your question empirically would be to look, I would say we have three types of, of rules currently in the U.S. We have zero tolerance, basically um, any, any level. We have 
Uh, the two to five, actually you would find, like Nevada actually had the lower, uh, that you have the five in other places like Washington, and then in Colorado, you have a, a, an odd one where it's five, but uh, with relative impairment. And I think looking at the experience in the court, what has been the experience of the courts in those jurisdictions shouldn't be that hard to find out. And I think that would probably be your, your best information to go by in terms of the least way to negatively impact your court system come this fall. So I, I don't have the answer, but I think that there's a solution to finding your answer. Merci.